Hey guys, Gander Dander here. Just a quick intro for this little video. Um, it is a clip from a video that I'm releasing tomorrow on Scanner Dander Premium. And it is a crazy case study on an oxygen sensor fault on a Jeep. It's a downstream sensor. It's been replaced already. There was some exhaust work done, some welding done. There are concerns of the harness and the computer driver that controls the heater circuit. And this little clip that you're watching right now is me teaching my son Caleb and you guys how to recognize a power or ground side switch circuit. This is a pulse width modulated oxygen sensor heater circuit. And that's where I'm picking this up with you guys. So I figured a little shameless plug for Scanner Danner Premium and then bring you guys a little piece of information that you can use and apply. And you don't have to subscribe to my uh, channel on my website to gain this little bit of knowledge. So enjoy this little clip and I hope to see you on Scanner Dana Premium. Uh, I'm thinking right just by looking at this we have a faulty O2 heater itself in the sensor. And I just want to make sure that I'm getting the, the signals I should be seeing, the pulsing on off signals. Um, and so we're going to do a couple of we'll do a couple voltage measurements here. We can actually keep the amp probe involved here too. Let me ask you something real quick. You're, like as you're measuring amperage with that clamp, yes. polarity doesn't matter. Is that because it's amperage that you're measuring? Um, polarity matters when you're doing amperage measurements um, because um, if I get my polarity wrong, watch, I'm going to invert it. See, it's upside down. So if I get the clamp backwards, if I get the clamp backwards, it's just going to turn it upside down. So it is important, but not important. I can just take my scope. Yes, correct. Because amperage doesn't change coming in or coming out of the sensor. Amperage doesn't change. Now our polarity does. It changes from north to south pole, you know, before and after a load. So if you measure it on one side, it'll be right side up. You measure it on the other side, it'll be upside down. And so from that standpoint, polarity is important only because it makes your waveform upside down on your scope. But it's different from voltage and that. Yes. Voltage, voltage changes. Yep, voltage depends on if it's power or ground side switched and it'd be high volts on one side, low volts on the other for a working circuit. Lots of variables with voltage, but amperage is the same. And we have some amperage here, but it's not what it should be, right? So a couple of voltage measurements is what we're gonna do combined with the amperage measurement. And I don't remember now if this is power or ground side controlled and uh, we'll figure that out here in a second. We're going to do this without looking at a diagram as well. Um, I just need to have a good ground in this rusty ass frame in Pennsylvania. I'm going to go after the easy one first, the one right in front of me. Wouldn't that be nice if this was my guy? All right, so that's my on off square wave. Let's see what this side looks like. This will answer my question on whether or not this is power or ground side switched. A, a steady high volts tells me it's ground side. A steady low volts is gonna tell me it's power side. And it's the green trace. I know I'm using a yellow lead, but it's the green trace I'm on. The fact that that's zero volts, ignore the yellow trace here. I'll help us, ignore the yellow trace. The fact that that's zero volts right now on that one white wire, and then that we have a high low square wave on that white wire one tells me the wire that was at zero all the time is a ground and the wire that's with the square wave is a switched power so this is a power side switched heater circuit if it was ground side switched when i check this other wire over here it would look the same on the control wire still 0 12 because it's pulsing it but it would be a constant high it would be constant high correct so we go over here and get that one so all i'm all i'm doing switching right there's your control wire and then here's your um, your constant wire and, and the fact that this constant wire is zero volts I'll get you a digital number there too the fact that that's zero tells me that the control is power side switched this is a power side switch circuit 
Cool. Power side switched heater, and then if I put the clamp on this, we can compare the two uh, amperage and voltage on the working one. So if it was power side switched, the control wire would have been grounded. If it was power side switched, what? You said this is a ground side switched. So this is a power side switched. If it was ground side switched, then the control wire would be going to ground like that. Correct. But it would look the same. It would look the same pulsing because you're still going battery voltage to zero, battery to zero. It would look the same on the control wire. Uh, it's the opposite wire that's answering our circuit design. You're coming up right now on my chapter two and three material that you need for this foundational stuff that would really help you. Yeah, for sure. We've done a lot, but you haven't really sat through the theory yet. I mean, it's going to help you so much. So that's, that, that's a lot of stuff in there. But this amperage, hang on, let me change the scale to five again. You see the that the voltage and amperage are mirrored, and here's the other here's the other telltale sign that this is this is now um, ground telling you that this is power side switched is let's set a trigger. Not really all that helpful. Let me pause that. When amperage rises, yellow trace voltage is rising if this was ground side switched if amperage was rising voltage would be dropping because we're completing it to ground if it has a power all the time then you ground it and that's when current flow starts so our green square wave the on time of the green square wave would be low if this was ground side switched and the fact that it's high, the same time our amperage goes high, also tells you this is power side switched. It's a power side switch circuit. Lots of ways to identify circuit design and all that stuff is better served in a theory situation where I can put all that down for you on paper. That's chapter three. For you guys following along, paying attention, chapter three material, that's what you need for this conversation right now which is what I'm coming up on what you're coming up on in the edits yep all right so what I'm looking at here now too to help me up there